Choice Awards announced their winners and there are some great surprises. I picked some of my faves for this weekend's Oscars. And I share my thoughts on the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Invincible, and For All Mankind. All that and the latest and everything cool today in The Rundown. Oh boy, do we have a jam-packed Friday episode of The Rundown for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. This is a reminder to everyone that is in the chat, and I see a whole bunch of you out there. Sulaco88, Mr. Psycho Canadian, uh, Ethan Jory, Rudy Garcia, Robert Tolan, Aknodesis, uh, Etch-A-Sketch22. I see some names I don't see all the time, which is wonderful. Guitar Zan is in there. Uh, John... Uh, Oh, I skipped past the name, but it's fantastic. John Hussey, good to see you. Uh, It's terrific that you're all here. The way that this works is I deliver the rundown, so we get into a little bit of news and topical discussion, and then immediately following, we are going to jump into uh, EPN Play's Judgment, and uh, I'm excited to play this. I haven't played it. It's in the Yakuza family, but it's slightly different, Uh, so we're going to have fun with that, but you know what? We've got to get started. I'm going to restart so I can cleanly edit this out into the archive. Let's do this again. Here we go. Hey, welcome to the... Oh, I almost said electric playground. I'm going to do it one more time. (laughs) It's Friday. Hey, welcome to the Rundown. My name is Victor Lucas, and it is my pleasure to be able to bring you the latest in everything cool. And that is thank you to our sponsor at the Gaming Stadium. They are Canada's leader in online esports tournament facilitation. They've got tournaments happening every weekend, like this weekend. You don't want to miss out on the action. You can join up with them at TGS.GG. They are fantastic people, so do me a favor. If you are on the Twitters, follow them and say that uh, Vic from the Rundown sent you, all right? This rundown, by the way, is dedicated to our friend Shirley Castle, who I am always delighted to see in the comments on videos that we post, and today she is in the chat. So, hello, Shirley. This one is for you. All right, the very first story on uh, top of my mind is the Dice Awards, the 24th annual Dice Awards, which happened uh, yesterday. They were streamed in various uh, different ways throughout the day. Everybody was uh, piping in from home. It was hosted by uh, Jessica uh, Chobot and Greg Miller and Khalif Adams, and Greg was showing off his, uh, his uh, that he was wearing shorts. It was very, um, it was very casual. It was probably the most casual Dice Awards ever considered. Conceived, but some really big games uh, received recognition for their incredible achievements. And obviously, Hades it topped the sort of message on the Dice uh, website there. Uh, but there were lots of other big games, and we're going to dive into that right now. Hades was crazy. It actually won five awards for Game of the Year, Outstanding Achievement in Game Direction, Outstanding Achievement in Game Design, Outstanding Achievement for an Independent Game, Action game of the year all went to Hades. And that's going to do it for the rundown today. Thank you. No, I mean, that's amazing. Hades, Supergiant Games, they are uh, obviously basking in a lot of love and deserved love. Their game is phenomenal. And uh, what a story for that team and that company. They have made nothing but great games, but Hades kind of stands head and shoulders above everything else that they've done. Ghost of Tsushima, though, from Inso- uh, from Sucker Punch, I almost said Insomniac, um, also got a couple of big awards. Outstanding achievements. Achievement in story and outstanding achievement in uh, oh actually got four awards outstanding achievement in audio design ad- adventure game of the year achievement in original music composition and outstanding achievement in art direction and uh, um, yeah it's just a beautiful beautiful experience you can see I mean it's it's a bit grisly and gory it doesn't sort of, sort of shy away from the violence that you. I have to endure and commit in the game, but it does it so wonderfully and so artistically. It's pleasing in every direction. And again, another standout title that deserves all of the uh, recognition that it is getting out there. Um, we got a couple of big awards for The Last of Us Part Two, which I'm sure it was a bit of an upset that this wasn't uh, winning a Game of the Year because it won a lot of Game of the Year awards uh, elsewhere, including here with our Rocket and Reagan Awards. But Last of Us Part Two picked up uh, outstanding achievement in story and outstanding achievement in animation. I like the way they 
they title their awards over at Dice, and these are all chosen by people that are you know within the industry making the games themselves, working for all these publishers and developers. It's very cool. Uh, so congrats, I, you know, to the Naughty Dog team. But Sony in general had lots of different awards. Uh, but also, uh, Valve came back and made games in 2020, and they brought us Half-Life Alex, and it won a couple of big awards, Immersive Reality Game of the Year and Immersive Reality Technical Achievement. I would agree with both of those. It is, uh, it's a showcase for what VR is capable of. And, uh, you know, as we've known for a long time, Valve is all in on VR. They totally believe in the concept of it, and they proved that you can have really deep and compelling gameplay with Half-Life Alex. So congratulations to the uh, Half-Life Alex team for those awards from DICE. And uh, best sports game of the year went to our buddy Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2. Uh, and I wholeheartedly agree with this one. Fantastic game. Uh, and, you know, game of the best sports game of the year. You can see that trailer right there. Beautiful. It's a good as hell. Just like the original games. Mario Kart Live was chosen as the best racing game of the year from DICE, which is pretty uh, remarkable. This is a crazy toy slash video game um, idea uh, from, um, oh, I forget the name of the developer. It is, uh, uh, I forget the name of the developer. I, I can't remember. The, they're, they're fantastic X Vicarious Visions folks, which is funny that it went from Tony Hawk to Mario Kart Live. Uh, but they did a great job with this game. It's a lot more compelling than you would think. The only knock about it is that it's a it's a hefty price tag, especially if you want to race against somebody else. You got to get two switches and two remote controlled uh, you know carts, and and then you got to battle head to head that way, which would be really fun. But uh, I think out of the price range of a lot of families out there, still incredible technology and an incredible game. Uh, Animal Crossing won for Best Family Game of 2020. And, uh, you know, New Horizons, I think, uh, just catapulted to the top of sales charts out there. It's become one of Nintendo's most important and popular franchises based on the back and success of this game, which came out in the uh, at the perfect time, as we've talked about a ton on the rundown. Um, and, you know, everybody was raving about this game and playing it like crazy and, and uh, you know, finding the best way to get the, the most for their turnips. But um, it, it also kind of had a drop-off, and it had, a, I, I think, a sort of a... Um, aesthetic drop-off comparative to something like Ghost of Tsushima, you know? Um, it was a wonderful experience, but it just didn't quite muster up the strength to win any m bigger types of awards, like Game of the Year awards. Uh, but still, a, a really phenomenal game. Um, and then it was nice to see that outstanding achievement in character. I went promise. To our pal Miles Morales, I think Insomniac did a phenomenal job bringing this other side of the Spidey universe into, uh, you know, the interactive realm uh, on the stuff that we saw in the Spider-Verse film Did I see well, which is great, but the, the heart and soul of this game Guys, is just thank really, you. really, both wonderful. of you. It's incredibly addictive. You it's need to lay low. Play, but don't trust a, anybody uh, and don't you know, take really off that mask. This message is from Rockstar. The underground was Love. They need you. Love a terrific game. So, uh, you know, good choices from Dice uh, and uh, and the uh, the committee that puts all of these awards together. They did a great job. Great nominations, and I think some appropriate winners in that collection. And also great work hosting, especially from Khalif Adams at uh, the Spawn on Me podcast. I know that this was a big deal that he got to be a part of the whole production, and it feels like. Uh, uh, his recognition in the industry just keeps growing and growing. So I'm very happy for him. And Greg and Jessica always kill it. So uh, good on the Dice folks for, for putting together a, another fun award show in these crazy times. And you know what? That's exactly what the Oscars have got to put together this weekend. And uh, I, I don't have all of the nominees for all of the Oscars, but I wanted to go through uh, a bunch of them. And we're going to start with um, the best 
actor category in the Oscars. We've got uh, Steven Yun in Minari, where he's uh, a father trying to grapple with, uh, in, you know, integrating into the United States with his family. We've got uh, Riz Ahmed in Sound of Metal, dealing with the loss of hearing as a rock star. Anthony Hopkins in The Father, who is uh, grappling with the uh, the loss of his, uh, he's, he's got dementia. And Chadwick Boseman, the late and great Chadwick Boseman from Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And we've got uh, Gary Oldman in there for Manx, uh, for Mank, which was directed by David Fincher. I would give it to Riz Ahmed. I haven't seen this movie. I've just seen a lot of behind the scenes and a lot of scenes from the film. And I just think that Riz Ahmed is a, a remarkable actor. And that's a powerful, uh, powerful story. You know, the idea of a rock star uh, losing their hearing. And uh, I think it's a topical one because hearing is so mysterious for all of us and you know most people suffer some hearing loss through life so I think that there's a a tremendous amount of uh, uh, connection to this story and I think the Academy is going to choose Riz Ahmed um, and uh, I can't wait to see that film it's one of the, the the few that I haven't seen yet now let's talk a little bit about the uh uh, best Actress category, uh, starting with Carrie Mulligan, uh, who ha- has killed it in Promising Young Woman. It's a real breakout role for her. Frances McDormand, um, again, being discussed for Best uh, Actress in uh, Nomadland. Uh, this is Viola Davis in uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And uh, this is Vanessa Kirby in uh, Pieces of a Woman, dealing with some pretty heavy stuff, um, the loss of a, a child. And then we've got uh, Andra Day, the United States versus Billie Holiday. And man, she looks just like Billie Holiday. But I'm going to give it to Viola Davis from Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Uh, unbelievable performance, completely entrancing. It's uh, You can't take your eyes off of her. I mean, it's just such a committed... Um, honest and, you know, visceral piece of work. You're just like, holy crap. She's just throwing all kinds of insults around. She is in charge of her band. Uh, it's an incredible, it's an incredible performance. I think that she's going to get it from the Academy. Let's talk about the best animated pictures. We've got Wolf Walkers, which is a beautiful, uh, sort of traditionally, you know, hand-drawn uh, piece of work that's on Apple TV+. Plus. This is, of course, Soul from... Uh, Pixar and Disney, which you can watch on Disney+. Plus. This is a Shaun the Sheep movie, one of those stop-motion films called Farmageddon. Uh, and this is Over the Moon, which you can watch on Netflix, which uh, gets really crazy and esoteric. My family and I watch this one. And then, of course, Disney Pixar's Onward. So Pixar is in competition with itself, which I think they've done that before. I My vote would go for Soul, which I think... Um, you know, was a love letter to jazz music uh, and, and performance in general, as as well as sort of, uh, you know, making the most out of a life. Uh, it dealt with some heavy stuff and, uh, you know, a lot of dreams and f- fulfilling those dreams and expectations surrounding dreams. It's a very poignant and beautiful film. I thought Soul was wonderful. Um, and let's get into the best director category. We have uh, Emerald Fennel for Promising Young Woman. Um, and this has got a, like a whip snap, really great pacing in that film. I loved Chloe Zhao's work in Nomadland. Uh, very authentic, very honest. Same thing could be said for Lee Isaac Chung's work in Minari. And um, we also have uh, David Fincher's kind of showy work with Mank, which was also a love letter to um, Fincher's deceased father. And then I haven't seen another round. This one's directed by Thomas Vinterberg. I've heard nothing but great things. It it really looks like a a wonderful film. But I'm going to give it to Chloe Zhao. I think that she just... uh, uh, you know, shock the world with the, uh, you know, the the rawness, the the beautiful out in nature cinematography and the raw performances that she got from non actors and everything just feels so authentic. It's it's definitely a slow moving, um, thoughtful, uh, you know, dissection of what life would be like when you walk away from it all and you live on the road. It's uh, it's an amazing movie. Um, yeah, and if, if you haven't seen Nomadland, I can't recommend it enough. I know it doesn't quite fit with our sci-fi and action and video game kind of stuff that we always talk about on EP, but uh, 
sometimes it's nice to, you know, have our mind blown by creativity, like is exemplified in Nomadland. All right, let's talk about the best picture category. And uh, there's seven in this one. Uh, this one is Nomadland. I've just been raving about this one. Uh, this is the trial of the Chicago Seven, which has a fantastic script and terrific performances by everybody involved. It's cast of thousands. Excellent work in there. Riz Ahmed is up again, uh, or the his movie Sound of uh, uh, Metal is uh, up there, and Minari is up there. Um, and uh, we also have Mank back again. A lot of themes here, right? We see a lot of these movies in a bunch of different categories. Uh, this is Judas and the Black Messiah, which was incredibly powerful and heavy uh, and expertly crafted. Very, very cool film. Uh, and Promising Young Woman is also up for a Best Picture. And uh, I think the last one is The Father. Yes, the Anthony Hopkins. It's amazing the career that Anthony Hopkins continues to have. He's just an incredible talent. But my pick for best picture of 2020 would be Nomadland. And I know it's, uh, you know, it's not a superhero movie, <laughs> which is, you know, kind of more my forte. But I was really, really blown away by Nomadland. And interestingly enough, Chloe Zhao, who directed Nomadland, is, has directed The Eternals, which we're going to get a glimpse of, I think, relatively soon. And it's supposed to be coming out this year. So she's making her own superhero movie. And I'm very curious to see how that turns out. Uh, and it kind of speaks to the... Uh, uh, um, you know, the the risk-taking that Marvel employs with the types of casting and the types of, uh, you know, crewing that it does for it, its work, you know? So cannot wait to see what Chloe Zhao does with the Eternals. So th there are my five picks. Would love to hear your choices for the Oscars. I know it was a weird year. You probably saw, you know, n t you probably didn't see a ton of the movies that came out last year. And if you did, you probably watched them all on on some kind of a streaming service or you downloaded them or whatever, or you're just catching up right now. Uh, but it should be interesting. And there definitely was some great work uh, in 2020 and, uh, and ho hopefully some really nice uh, speeches and, and some nice moments happen when we get to watch the Oscars uh, this weekend. All right, uh, I wanted to uh, dive into um, three shows that I've been watching, two of them wrapped up today, and uh, I, I just wanted to give you my thoughts, okay? And the first one that I'm going to talk about is For All Mankind. This is an Apple show. Apple has paid for the production of this show, working with Sony uh, Pictures, um, and uh, the showrunner is Ronald D. Moore. It was co-created by Ronald D. Moore, and uh, it is a, an amazing series. This is a kind of a recap of the first season. Season two just wrapped up. The first season is kind of the space race through the 70s. This is the idea that uh, the Russia and America are trying to land on the moon, and it, it turns out that Russia is the first one to land on the moon, and it freaks out the American uh, pilots and astronauts that are trying to go out there. But the other side of this is that um, female pilots are employed and engaged to be a part of the space race and, and, uh, and NASA as well. And so Russia has the first man on the moon, but America says, okay, well, we're going to have the first woman on the moon. And so we get a whole um, alternative history on what happened during the space race. And we see female pilots become astronauts and we see things that echo reality, but it's a little bit twisted and a little bit turned in different directions. And there are technological advancements that happen because the space race doesn't really end. And so in the first season, we kind of get to the moon. Um, there's a base kind of set up on the moon and people live there for a while and, uh, and and all kinds of, you know, interesting things happen there. I won't, I won't spoil. Uh, and then in season two, um, there's a little bit more of a, an institution being set up and there's a little bit more of a hostile rivalry happening between Russia and America and the astronauts that were a part of getting people into space for the first time are are sort of the veterans now and the technologies improve we see electric vehicles we see uh, female astronauts becoming celebrities and we also see you know as Ronald D Moore is an expert with shows like Outlander and with especially Battlestar Galactica we see um, the unraveling of uh, you know, what all of this means. And we really get to kind of peel through the layers of uh, uh, personality and um, uh, relationships 
with people, you know, on Earth and dealing with people on out in space and having to just sort of trust that everything will go well. And of course, not everything can and does go well. Um, and so, it, it, you know, the story kind of has a ton of twists and turns and a lot of different actors. But, you know, one of the things you, you see, Joel Kinnaman, Joel Kinnaman is uh, one of the leads in the show and he's terrific. Um, and the guy that plays Gordo Cooper, he's a he's a uh, a New Zealand actor. He is just phenomenal. His name is Michael Dorman. And uh, he does an interesting uh, thing with his character in the second season because he goes through a bunch of stuff in the first season. At the beginning of the second season, he is kind of traumatized and uh, he's totally out of shape and freaked out and doesn't really feel like he can go back out into space. But of, of course he does. And, uh, you know, some interesting things uh, befall him as they do with all of the other characters that are in there. But, I, you know, it, this is... Uh, an amazing slow burn of a show and it's not really a show you know these trailers and these teases kind of showcase that there are some space scenes and stuff and we do get out into space and we do see the technology to get to space but uh, a lot of the sort of brick building and brick laying of the series is is the human condition on the road to getting to space. And that includes in, uh, you know, the command center and all of the politicians and, and the military personnel trying to grapple with what it means for uh, engagement in outer space and, and employment to outer space. Um, and it's just phenomenal. It's just incredibly captivating and engrossing. Ronald D. Moore is one of my favorite producers in uh in hollywood i can't recommend this show enough the you know the interesting thing of is of course you're going to have to get a an apple uh plus apple tv plus subscription in order to be able to watch this so i you know it's exclusive to the apple sort of ecosystem which is a bit weird so it's a show that isn't really for everybody which is um a bit nuts because it, it it sure is Standing the test of time, season three has already been greenlit. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing where the story heads to now because they're going to jump ahead in time again. Uh, but it's all fascinating stuff, especially if you're a fan of uh, space exploration like myself. Um, let's talk a little bit about episode seven of Invincible. I uh, watched this last night, and it is a shocking show. Uh, we've talked about you know, in great detail that there's quite a bit of violence in the property, whether you read it on the page in the comic series or you watch it on the screen in this TV show, it doesn't shy away from some pretty heavy sequences. Um, I was really impressed with the uh, uh, getting to know the character of Robot in this episode. Robot is working with these clone geneticists to try to um, bring his personality into a, a, a host that will be more uh, fitting for Monster Girl. He, there is this uh, attraction that Robot has with this character and wants to uh, um, connect with her. So we get a, a sequence there. But we also uh, get to see, uh, you know, a little bit of the truth behind Omega Man. I think that's his name. Mark's father. I can't keep all the superhero names uh, together. We, we're starting to see his backstory unravel a little bit. He, of course, um, killed the uh, Guardians of the Globe in the very first episode and kind of showed his penchant for violence. And in this episode, uh, he has to face up with some uh, old foes who come back and try to ch challenge him. And then there's also uh, monsters that get thrown into his face. But he just seems... Um, even doubly invincible than his son, Invincible. And this is the, you know, uh, where we get to see Mark's mother kind of grapple with the government, Cecil, and, and they try to figure out how they can actually stop this guy who's on a rampage. And he is a threat to humanity. And, um, you know, we're, we're starting to see the rest of the characters understand that this guy is... Uh, uh, not what he's cracked up to be. He's the world's strongest superhero, but maybe he's not that super. And at the end of the episode, we get to see the opening sort of confrontation between the father and the son. So it, it's a great lead up into what is going to happen in episode eight. Um, there are some shocking deaths in this episode, like there are in uh, 
uh, every episode of Invincible, but there's some really interesting, sh you know, rebirths as well. Um, I can't recommend this show enough either. Invincible is phenomenal. It's It's got a lot of depth and a lot of incredible detail. There are a lot of superheroes um, that are sort of alternative and, and uh, you know, I can't even keep them all straight half the time, but holy crap, is it well made and, and well voiced. Um, and the audio sort of... Uh, um, the, you know the, the audio effects and the and the the, the surround sound um, quality of everything is it's like theatrical quality you know it's really a wonderful wonderful show um, I'm super impressed and I'm sticking I'm sticking with Invincible for as long as it keeps going really really looking forward to next week's show but the big news in uh, in television I think for today was that of course the Falcon and the Winter Soldier wrapped up and. Um, uh, the finale was pretty damn good. I did feel, you know, upon reflection, there there were, you know, there was a lot of mysteries kind of solved and a lot of uh, storylines kind of uh, uh, cleaned up, and we got to kind of see the the uh, the conclusion of what the flag smashers were all about. And this was the uh, the quote unquote terrorist group out there that was trying to stop this sort of um, government intervention into the lives of people that were uh, living happily before the blip and then being forced into all kinds of new living conditions because people had come back to life. It's a very interesting paradigm and a very interesting setup for the series. We also got to see some kind of a resolution with uh, this new Captain America uh, or this former Captain America, John Walker. And um, so we got to, to uh, see his transformation into the U.S. agent, which was pretty damn cool. Um, and uh, then we also got to see, you know, Bucky grapple with his past uh, and face up to the fact that he's got to tell people that he, he was a killer and, and, it, and it was beyond his control and he killed people that he cared about. We also got to find out who the power broker is. And uh, we get to see that Sharon Carter is not the person that we uh, knew her as uh, prior to this series. Um, and it, all of those elements were super cool. You know, I really dig the the espionage kind of quality to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I love this kind of spy theme around everything. Um, you know, of course, fused with all the super heroics and all these awesome action sequences. It's a blast. Uh, but I did feel at, at the conclusion... Um, and the big reveal, of course, was that uh, the Falcon is now the new Captain America, and they showed off the the new suit, and there was some really fantastic action, uh, you know, flying around with the shield and and uh, uh, Fal Cap, <laughs> employing both of his uh, his wings and the shield to fantastic effect. Especially the there's this wicked scene where he um, shields himself from a helicopter that's about to crash land. I was really impressed by all of that, but I did kind of feel like this was a, a TV show with so many great broad ideas and as you know welcome as it was to have six hours to kind of dive into all of this lore and all of this intrigue it, it, I wanted like another episode or two you know because there was just so many different directions and threads and so much more story that we could have taken you know um, I love that we got to see a little bit more with Isaiah and and he's super uh they honor him, uh, you know, which is really fantastic. Um, the the black Captain America uh, that never got to, to wear the shield, uh, the super soldier that that fought for a country that didn't really respect him. I mean, I loved all of those themes and I loved that storytelling. But yeah, upon reflecting on the whole season, I feel like we jumped quickly. You know, it's interesting to see it in context of For All Mankind, which has all of these different characters and all of these different directions, but the slow burn of it across 10 episodes per season lets you kind of sink in and really understand people's, um, you know, ambitions and their desires and, and, and reasons for doing things that they're doing. Um, and I feel like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier does an all right job with that, but we do jump from moment to moment to moment a little bit too quickly, and things are just sort of wrapped up at the end. Um, that being said, I, what I think surprised me the most about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier was the um, 
like the truly open-ended nature of the conclusion. You really get a sense that there could be a season two. And I didn't think that that was going to be the case when we first started to watch the show. Um, and so that excites me. The fact that we are now going to move forward and be uh, watching um, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, this new Captain America, all of that sounds uh, incredibly exciting to me. So I'm, I'm down for that. I think there was terrific work. And, you know, I know that this was the first TV show that Marvel Studios was really jumping on board with. And I thought that they, you know, overall, it was it was wonderful. But I feel like it could go a little bit smoother as we go from sequence to sequence. Um, and, you know, the, the show also has a, a fallback to uh, a lot of tropes that we see in a lot of TV shows, you, you know, there's a, this sort of hints that the world is going to get bigger and we're going to see some surprise cameos, but then it's always kind of tying in the cast members that we already know already and sort of it, it, it sort of posits that we're going to expand, but then we shrink the world back to familiar characters that have already been on screen, which I think a lot of television programming um, does that. Uh, and that's something that we have been able to uh, sidestep around in the MCU on on the big screen in the movie theaters because you know in all almost every Marvel movie after they made about the I don't know the tenth one or so there was always this reveal this massive new hero or massive new villain that was coming into frame and we were constantly surprised like that and it felt a little bit circuitous to uh, um, go back to characters like uh, you know um, Sharon Carter becoming the power broker. Uh, but you know what? I mean, I'm I'm quibbling. I enjoyed myself thoroughly with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I want more. Uh, I think everybody did terrific work. I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. And if you were wondering how I would stack up the Falcon and the Winter Soldier to WandaVision, I think I like WandaVision a little more, even if the finale was a little, uh, you know, underwhelming. That show as well could have stretched out a little bit more. Um, but I just love the... I don't know, the surprises and the the wackiness of WandaVision. It was really crazy. Uh, but Falcon and the Winter Soldier, terrific. Don't miss For All Mankind. And uh, um, definitely be watching Invincible. We're, I think we're in the golden age of television. Definitely the golden age of genre or sci-fi or superhero television. It's amazing. We have all kinds of great stuff to watch. All right, um, so we talked a lot about linear entertainment. I think it is time to wrap up this episode of The Rundown. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Thank you especially to all of our sponsors and our EPN members out there. I'll be back on Monday with a fresh episode for you. Uh, in the meantime, make sure that you have some fun playing games. And when you sit down to play games, the motto is play forever. Welcome to EPN Plays. Today we are going to be checking out a game called Judgment. This is uh, from Sega, and it's uh, made by the um, same people that make the Yakuza games, but it's a side story. And the original game came out in uh, 2018, and this has been remastered for the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. I'm playing it on the uh, Xbox Series X. Sega shot me out a code so that I could uh, talk about this game with you guys, and I'm excited to play it. I didn't play it in 2018, and uh, it's Judgment Day, Sam. I am 111. Um, thank you to everybody that stuck with me through that very wordy rundown. I had a lot to talk about. I didn't know how many words I was going to fit into an episode of the rundown, but I think I maxed out. I, I said a lot of words, uh, but there's a lot to talk about, lots of fun things going on. Okay, let's play uh, Judgment. We're going to just start from a cold save point right here. New game. We're going to go normal. Um, I don't see the other thing. Can you guys see it? Let's see. Oh, maybe it's this way. Oh, I see. Balance it out that way. Okay, there we go. Yes, here we go. Uh, I'm going to close a few windows on my computer. 
I'm gonna expand this out just a bit. There we go, so I can see that. Here we go. Oh, really? <laughs> Blair Farrell, I had audio hits? I, I don't know what's going on with that because I double check everything, but I guess it doesn't show me that I have a uh, uh, the the sound on in OBS. It's like it takes a second, yes, so I'm I clicking through completely. everything, and I, I must be going too quickly. But I appreciate we'll absolutely that. Absolutely, be able to help you out with that. All right. I guarantee you. I was sure I had turned all of that stuff off. It's very frustrating. Okay, let's get into this game. Oh, you must be talking about Yagami. Absolutely. We appreciate any interest you might have. This is on the but uh, Xbox just, Series uh, X, you guys. Lawyer at the Genda Law Office. I've got it in um, in English and the subtitles are on. Well, must be so nice to be a rock star. Right, Salary Chan? Playing this on the Xbox Series X. Yes. Yagami is currently employed by our So this is the remastered version of the game, so it should look prettier. But, of course, I'm streaming on, uh, uh, Same bullshit you know, through a 1080p uh, box. So it, it, it's not in 4K with in. all the huh? HDR Yagami glory. Sensei. Battle Axe, Nodding 56. Noted. Hey, throw me a bone. I never would have won without a hand from these two. Of course you wouldn't have. 99% of these cases end up in convictions. It makes an acquittal a big deal, even if it was just luck. Talk about a lawyer being a hero. Um, Acknote says, I have one of the original ones, good. Um, and I so, do use it. Wipe that grin off your uh, face. You think you're better than us? But I, this is the I'm Series X controller, and I like it. Could Feels good. Me. You know, you're not going to win all of them. Trust me, pal. My record's not. Are you listening? I think if you can find the Japanese release, the Sam I Am One One One, you can play with that original actor. Well, Shintani's available right now. Yeah, you bet. He's more experienced. Are you hearing that? No, no. Now I'm getting I, tossed your goddamn leftovers. You like he does <sighs> Shut up, man. Okay, and you're sure? He's as skilled as they come. Trust me. But well, that no. just can't be. Right. <laughs> I cannot do that, Bush and cases. Ryu Cat. You know how rare that is. <sighs> Haven't you heard? Ninety-nine point nine percent of criminal court cases end with the defendant behind bars. Pretty ridiculous, huh? right? What? Well, you still want Yagami, though. Man, I am so done. Hey, can it? <laughs> yes. Yes. And you're absolutely And now sure. we know who the boss of the office is. I understand. I'll tell him. Who was that? Another call for Yagami Sensei. Big whoop. But the client is Shinpei Okubo. Mm. Huh? Not sure I believe that. Okubo is a free man now. Not anymore. He's been arrested for murder. Come on. We already proved he was innocent, right? It's a new case. He's being processed right now. What they told me is that he stabbed his girlfriend Emmy to death, set the apartment on fire. So this is um, would never do an that. investigation type game. You're kind of on the other side of the law. Stabbing Emmy John. So there's some detective kind of work that you have to do. I just don't understand it. From what I've read, I haven't played it. Okubo. How could he? Wow. Ooh. 
that day, my career as a lawyer died alongside Emi-chan. Both murdered by Shinpei Okubo. This looks amazing. That's really cool. Uh, this is made by um, one of Sega's internal teams. I forget the name of the... I'll, I'll find that for you. I probably won't be able to pronounce it. Ryu Ga Gotoku Studio, in, and it's um, it's a spin-off of the Yakuza yeah. series. Right the Don Quixote. And uh, your way now. you just about see our man. I think it's directed by the guy that is in charge of. Uh, yeah. It's Koji Yoshida is the director. He doesn't have a clue, huh? And Nagoshi wrote the game. You're getting good at this. Almost like a pro. Wow, thanks. I always dreamed of being a professional stalker. <laughs> Not sure I could call it that. You gotta admit, this is crazy, though. A detective tailing another detective? You only see that shit on TV. Right on, Sam. I am on one. Have not. you guys played this? Who's, pl who's played the game? Oh, Axel B, thanks for being here. Thanks for saying hello. All right, I'll join up with you soon. Okay. <laughs> Step aside, old man. Piece of goddamn trash. The asshole, he said no! Man, I like the uh, starting at the bottom kind of vibe of, huh? of this franchise. The fuck are you doing? What? Now, you want to die, bitch? The hell is his problem? <sighs> What's going on back there, buddy? Uh... Looks like I need to teach these punks a little lesson. Nodding 56. That might happen, man. I feel like, um... Hey, who you call punks, you homeless piece I mean, Evercade just announced... I should have put that in the news today. I'll put it in a Monday. Evercade just announced a new retro console. We got the Intellivision coming. Sega did the the mini Genesis, and I think that did very well. I think Sega will come back making consoles. <laughs> I mean, the more software that they make, the more ammo they have to, uh, you know, tie it all into some kind of console or service okay. or whatever. Or maybe they get acquired. How's that? Um, but they're a massive player, man. Incredibly important company. We all love Sega here, right? Yes. Uh, I'm watching EP Live and Mortal Kombat. Right on, Murdoch McCoy. That's very cool. All right, so, um, uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, was that the name of the last one? Um, it was a turn-based role-playing experience, whereas so many of the Yakuza games had a lot of this. It's kind of action game. So it kind of feels good to go back to this after, uh, the last Yakuza game, which I also loved. <laughs> Aknonsis is from the alternate universe where the Sega kept making machines. I wish. Let me know how the mix is. Hopefully it's not too loud. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Uh, yeah. Cool. Okay, I need to press Y while holding an, a weapon. <laughs> oh, that's great. Imagine watching one person do that much damage. Nodding 56, absolutely. I have a, an HDMI out on my Dreamcast. I could do that. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, we actually looked at the feasibility of getting an outrun sit-down arcade for our office, but it took up a bit too much space, and the maintenance would have been expensive, Matthew Winston. That's how the, the uh, arcade one-up is kind of making a terrific name for itself out there. They're probably not going to last forever, those machines, but they don't cost a fortune either, you know? Make it quick. Any minute now, he's going to figure out I'm Do you hate him, Matthew? Club Sega, Video James. Who's been to Japan? Okay, so we gotta go there. Let's go. This looks so good. Okay, he's on to me. Good luck. Really? I need more time. So this is a pop star that is playing. Uh, well, that's just rude the lead character. Um, not the English voice, but they uh, used his likeness. He's a famous, he's a famous guy in Japan. Francois Tremblay, good to see you. Hello. Oh, Matthew Winston, I'm super jealous. If I had more room down here in my uh, television studio basement, uh, I would, uh, I would have more of those. I would have some of those arcade one-up machines. I would love that TMNT one. Um, okay, so I'm looking for this guy. Okay, well he's right there. Okay, tailing search mode. Find the person who matches the traits displayed on the right. If you find anyone suspicious, hover over them and press the trigger button. Okay. All right, let's see what we got. Hey. There he is. Where's a hat? Where's a jacket? Oh, it's not him. It's not him. Oh, they fool you. Right out of the gate, they fool you. Okay, so I'm in first person mode. I gotcha, I gotcha. There he is. What the? Got them all. Yeah. Cool. Found him. Finally. Thought you were never gonna catch up, man. That's cool. Sorry. Uh sounds familiar, Sam I am one one one. Salut! Francois Tremblay. Time for me to go. Have a nice weekend, everyone, and explore a new park, trail, or beach in your area. Stay home and keep safe. Very nice, Shirley. Have a great weekend. Okay, so we tailored the detective. Okay. You're teaching me the systems. Alright. If the target sees you when this happens, the caution gauge will start spiking. Failing to get out of sight in time will cost you the mission. Okay. Oh, that's cool. You won't be able to move while hiding, so find the right time to emerge by pressing B so your target doesn't complete, completely slip away. Okay. It's all good, guy. All good. Chris Smith. That was something that Simon McCoy was trying to avoid, the director. Um, talking about Mortal Kombat. Uh, feeling like Legacy. 
But I think what that says is that Tancheron, who directed the Kevin Tancheron, who directed Legacy, did such an excellent job, you know, with hardly any money. But I also liked the movie. The movie was fun. The fidelity is really good on this game, man. Look at all the light. Hey, hey you! It's high time you pay Bouncing the off the jacket. The detail Let's in this game is stunning. Water, okay? The pavement, water reflection, just shadows. I was just thinking that, nodding 56. Week, I am done warning you. Uh, I actually do enjoy this mission type, though. Bye for now. I mean, it fits with the detective game. I like that. Oh, that was close. Oh, Billy Williams has been playing this on Stadia. All right, here we go. <laughs> Everybody would be looking at that guy hiding behind the car like that. It looks amazing, this game, man. Very cool. Okay. go. How does this run on Stadia, Billy Williams? Sega's done the same move as Insomniac with Spider-Man Remastered. Stadia is 1080p, but it can be run in 4K. So you can have performance versus um, uh, fidelity. Can't afford to get that thing fixed again. Yeah, yeah. Just don't lose him. One sec. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Alright. The music gets quite thrilling. Uh, Farscape, yes, this is on Series X. It's not on Game Pass, though. Not yet, at least. But there have been a lot of Yakuza experiences recently, all of these remakes and remasters and, and the brand new game. So he's a suspicious detective. All right, here we go. He just ducked into an empty lot, Kaito-san. Dead end. We follow him, we blow our cover. What do you think he's doing in there? Probably meeting someone he doesn't want to be seen with. Your internet speed on Wi-Fi has to be 150 or 200, but and it's pricey bill to say to say, to be set at least. Billy Williams, yeah, I mean, I, I I am super impressed by the tech 
from Stadia, and I've had some good experiences, but yeah, there's there's still some stuff to some rough stuff to figure out there for sure. There's a cat right there. Hello, kitty. Hello. Hi. Okay, locate my drone. I have a drone. There it is. What the? That's there it cool. is. Hold on. I'll send the feed to your phone. Okay, so now I can see what it's doing. Nice flying, Kaito-san. Keep it steady. You've been practicing? Now's not a good time, talk. Got good afternoon, Raul. Hmm. There's another guy in there with him. So he is meeting someone. Hey, I know that guy. It's a bookie for horse races. Trying to gamble his way to paying off debts, huh? Because that always works. Yeah, well, if they came all the way out here just to meet, he must have the cash on him. Mm hmm? We'll get what we need if we move now. You remember what we're doing here, right? Collecting the debt that detective owns. Oh, I get it. This is our chance. Just relax. Let me do my thing, okay? You got it, Talk. Don't fuck it up. It's not going to fight them. So they're basically teaching you some of the core things you're nice going to do. Huh, detective? So this is a dirty cop. Huh? I hear the bookies in Camarocho make some pretty good deals. You win 10% more, you lose 10% less. They make it sound so enticing. Maybe I should get in on it. Hey, where are you going? Don't you need your money? What the hell is this? Who are you? I'm here to get my client's money back before you lose it on another horse. So they hired a thug to collect. Should I be impressed you found me? A thug? Well, that's not very nice. You and I are in the same business. You're a detective? Afraid so. I hear you're pretty hard to get a hold of. That's why the people you owe came to me. Look, I know you have the money on you. You can't get out of this. Just do us I, both a favor. I, uh, and pay up. I enjoy the uh, <laughs> well, sort of right. the Americanized have the money. take on these Japanese, like these Japanese characters and these Japanese settings. It's so incongruous, but Just there's something wait, really okay? wonderful in that. Are you serious? I didn't track you down just so you could... Maybe next time! Whoa. Oh, and I love that shit. this goes from 0 to 100. All these Yakuza games, they go from like 0 to 100 like that. Run for it. I saw. Where are you going, little guy? Damn it. Get back here. All right, here we go. Capture the horse player detective. Ooh, we do some parkour. Cool, here we go. Stay away from me. Whoop, <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. That's awesome. Okay. Hold up. This is very Shenmue-like, isn't it? Oh, come on now. Oh, cool. Can I do it again? Retry, let's go. Yep, absolutely, Sam. I am on one. Are you serious? Maybe next time. What? Maybe next time. making a run for it. I saw. Damn it. Get back here. He's got the drone. He should be able to keep him in sight all the way. Let's go. Get him. Come on, I did do that. Oh, I guess I didn't. Don't touch the controller until you need to make the uh, the appropriate button command. 
Gotcha. Okay. You won't get away. There we go. Oh, that's cool. Oh damn it. What the hell was that? I hit myself in the face. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Cool. These guys are not subtle. <laughs> I keep getting Leon Kennedy vibes from the QTEs. <laughs> you need to learn when to quit. Shut up. I have it all figured out. I'll get the money! All right, horse player detective, you're going down. All right. Nice. Oh man, this is crazy. I love these games. They're just so insane. <laughs> so, oh my god, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, kick in the face. Get him, coach. I don't get it. Didn't you say you were a detective? Is that true? Sam, I am on one. I never said I'd field any questions, asshole. The ghost, she's been there for a long time. It's Yagami. You're speaking my language, Sam, I am on one. Some, some terrific me? games in there. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Vic. Now I have so, to get this game edible let's fitness. Let's be civil here. <laughs> Just hand over the cash, okay? 150 grand sound good? Playing these games the uh, on the streams. You know, like I love oh, reviewing the stuff oh, yeah. too, but it, there's, there's a great economy to being able to show you guys. You are? You know, some of the some of the play and how I interact with it in real time like this. You're not a detective asshole. You're it's very useful, and I know that. I mean, there's lots of streaming choices out there, but it does feel like a lot of streamers are just like focused on one genre or one game, and and you're you know you, you go to those streamers for that specific info. And I'm a generalist. I like all kinds of stuff. So when you come and watch the stuff we're streaming here, it's gonna be a new game almost every time. Aknode sis, I was going to stream near Replicant today, but it, it was buggy on the PC, and I didn't have time to figure it out, so I tried a couple things, and, and I went, okay, screw it, that's why this one, this one won. I'll try to stream uh, near Replicant next week. I think we both know who threw the first punch. No way I'm going to let that slide. Look at all the, the blood and snot all over the guy. Huh? But that's a lawyer's badge. So you not a detective. And you still want to sue? You know. It's a lawyer's badge. Look at that thing. Nodding 56. Yeah, and you know, I love shooting.
All right, here we go. Skip it. All right, here we go. Good evening, E peeps. JBJ Blaze, good to see you. Come, Rocho. No better place for a night out. Ah, Tiago Santos, thank you, man. A neon city. But the brighter the lights, the darker the shadows. Yeah, a lot of fun streaming uh, Scourge Bringer yesterday. The whole town's run by the toughest Yakuza family out there the Tojo clan. So and there's the, the intersect. Dig, the more interesting things get, more dangerous, too. Take this burglary ring. Just a bunch of kids looking for kicks. So cool. Word is, they met on some sketchy website. Never even seen each other's faces. Whoa! As for the cops, they can't catch a single one. So that's the, the next only mission thing here. Anyone really cares about in Kamurocho these days, though, is the murders. Mm. Over three months, three Kansai Yakuza have turned up this dead. Is cool. Most think it's the Tojo clan making some kind of power move in the ongoing turf war. This one's missing its eyes, too. Mm. That's not the only thing, though. All three of them were missing their eyes. Big spoilery conversation about the uh, the it's show in, little corner of this in the rundown, the JBJ. Agency. So watch it first, then watch the rundown. I work alongside my partner, Kaito-san. Funny enough, he's ex-Tojo. And me? I'm Takayuki Yagami. Used to be a lawyer, but I put that life behind me three years ago. As for my badge, it's barely even a decoration at this point. Here we go. Might be JBJ. Here, I'll scrounge up the rest for you later. What about your cut? I'll get it eventually. I didn't play the original Judgment, so I don't know how gotcha. it compares, and and uh, anyway, you know if you, if you guys can notice any visual. See if he's got any work. Fidelity Don't improvements or changes. I'm going to pop to full office. screen here for a bit. So you can see there. the game. Uh, you're aware they're one of our best clients, right? Yeah, yeah. In all its glory. Agent Marie, good to see you. Here, buy him some sweets or something. At least go through the motions. So generous. My boy's all grown up. They always Don't cast really can. good English voiceover actors. There are mini games in this. I don't know if they're the uh, Sega arcade games or not. There's a pinball game in here, is there? What can we listen to? So we can find I some hear records. They've got some extra fancy dorayaki at the Popo over on Tenkaichi Street. Huh? Well, right. Uh Go buy a gift for the office. Okay. Can I play this this video game? 
at how detailed this environment is. It's really impressive, man. And I can get some new outfits, but I don't have any. Okay. What can I get? Do I have anything? Alright. So I can change my uh, my office a little bit. That's so cool. Okay. So I'm going to go buy a gift for the office. Um, I don't usually play with subtitles. I like it to be as cinema, uh, cinema, uh, uh, cinema, cinema graphic. Is that the right word? Cinematic. <laughs> My mind's kind of uh, Friday mush right now. Cinematic as possible, JBJ. Okay, where am I going? I am going. Um... To here. Here we go. Oh, not that way. This way. Cinemagraphic. <laughs> so many words. I said so many words today. You know, like I feel like that I have an odometer on how many words I can say in a day. Let's go this way. And what am I buying? So cool. Is this what I'm buying? Hold on there, pal. Fight. You just bought some of them Doriaki, yeah? Sorry, but they're mine now. Uh, are the they? blacks are really Look, crushed on my um OBS screen, but I don't know how they are looking. Stand for that, right, boys? Yeah, they're very crushed. Wow. I can't argue with that logic. What was that, smartass? I brightened it a little bit for this framing, so let's see if that looks a bit better. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that's better. It does feel less um, saturated, doesn't it? This is very cool. It almost feels like this generation of games was... Or machines is like the perfect place. What am I looking for? Uh, oh, I can find new things. Okay, cool. It, because there's so much... Uh, uh, detail in the... Uh, And everything, like all of the cut sequences, all of the character designs, the clothing, it's like it, the the games really benefit from the horsepower of of modern systems. Damn you! They were almost too ambitious when a lot of these first Yakuza games started to hit. Always getting into trouble, Captain Hamura. Lot to look at, huh? Our boy talk here doesn't start shit without a real good reason. And that means it was you. You dumbasses jumped the wrong guy. Hey, hi there, how you doing? You know this guy's like a son to the Matsu. Elvis is in the game. Right? Louis Arias. Know what I'm trying to say? Asshole. Hey, come on, Cap. Can't we just let it be? No can do. Oh. This right here. 
just became a matter of Matsugane family honor. I'm sorry. <laughs> That was the character that was changed, Blade Blur. Kengo, you haven't met our this is uh, on the Xbox Series the X, just came out know. today. It's uh, Judgment uh, Remastered. Right. It's good to meet you. The uh, and that was from Eric Cabreros. Made him into a damn good attorney. Guy even managed to get a bona fide serial killer off the hook. Digital Elixir says, Seriously? one punch! Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> right? Damn shame seeing talent like that go to waste. Huh, totally! <laughs> Get this, though. The first thing that killer did when he got loose... See the pores in his face? His it's amazing. To death. Can you believe that? <laughs> incredible backstory on this, huh, Blade Blur? <laughs> It's almost yep. too close to home. God, Shadow God, missed God, one. God, Hello. They get around to hanging his ass, talk. Not yet, no. Oh, what the hell's taking now, so long? Now, it, it, are all of these characters, here, or a bunch this of them, the like real the actors? Did they get their likenesses? The rest is yours. I already took. Is my that guy. part of the magic of the storytelling? Good. You're finally getting the hang of this whole debt collection. And so, thing. if a yeah. To you. Uh, an actor in Japan gets busted for drug possession. They have to scrub the whole thing. Fine. Well, that's cool, Blabler. So there's somebody that looks just like this guy. Around. Not wise to stay in town after you get kicked out of the family. But uh, so cool. I, can I mean, so hyper detailed. It must, what it, it must be so freaky to speaking of see yourself as a video game character. None of your damn business, I'd say. Come on. Let's go. One more. These games are impossible to 100%. Yeah, you have to have the patience to get all the way through for sure. I've never done that. They use facial models. They recast the actor and change the model's face as well. The uh, English voice casting is excellent too. I always find it um, uh, crazy because they're so Americanized. Like the uh, All of the... Um, uh, localization that they put into these games is terrific, but it just feels so weird that it's so overtly Japanese and they are so overt overtly Americanized with their voiceovers. Oh, great, great question from Vague Zone Podcast. What game would I like to be a character in? Uh, oh, it would be fun to be uh, in a superhero game. I, I mean, it would be awesome. Pretty much any Marvel or DC game, I would be over the moon. What do you think is better, Yakuza or Persona series? Ooh, that's a good question. I, I, I've I, played Persona 4 and Persona 5 and uh, Royal, and those games are amazing. Um, but I've played a lot of Yakuza games, There, and there is a, a similarity from Yakuza to Yakuza. In, in the play styles, the stories are always... Crazy. They always just go in a million different directions. I think there's probably more ambition in um, the story directions of the of Persona games, but I love the Sega celebration that happens in, in the Yakuza franchise and the celebration of uh, uh, of Japan. They're very different as well. Man, that's a hard question. I think there's probably a little bit more kind of surreal artistry in the Persona experience. That's really impressive. That's a great question. What about my vocal performance in Maximo 2 Army of Zin? That was fun. Yeah, I'd like to do more of that. That'd be that'd be a blast. Oh, okay. Now I can run off the walls. Okay. Oh, an Indiana Jones game would be amazing. Maybe as uh, Harrison Ford's kid. That would be great. Really, guys?
<laughs> it's a realistic big face as Iron Man. That'd be hilarious. Big zone. Uh, what am I doing? I go, I'm going back to the law office. Okay. That's the thing about these these games. I keep wanting to say Yakuza, but this is slightly different. But there, you just get law. You you just completely. It's like the family circus cartoons. You just start going off in different directions. There's just so many things to get get lost in. One more not excited about the next Indiana Jones hey there, movie. You should be. James okay. Mangold Koryaki. knows what he's doing. Extra fancy. He did Logan. Now are you excited? Genda Law Office, where I used to work. Things haven't changed yeah, much Sam, I am on one three years. Sega could do more with that Hello, stuff, Yagami couldn't they? Oh, I didn't see you there. You uh, getting situated? Yes. Almost identical. Everyone here is just great. <laughs> You know what I mean. You you start going to the store to get something, and then you walk, you cruise off in a bunch of different directions, so and you, you suddenly you find yourself in an arcade playing Outrun for a while. <laughs> you know what I mean, Vague Zone Podcast. How did you end up in this dump and not in a bigger office, huh? Huh? Well, you see, that's. Uh, I hear you over there, uh, Yagami. Evening, Kendo Sensei. Other than my question, dad, what is my favorite GameCube game? To like a wow. Genda Sensei is one of those people. He oh. gave me a job here before I'd even gotten out of law school. Give Give me a bunch of your favorites, and then I'll 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 Should remember Tommy where Sensei to go. Out for the night? Uh, I can't keep track of that boy. David Jaffe rocks, sure man. He's though. he's super you fun. Have to deal with super him, impressed huh? with that guy. You two can't stand each other. You hate each other's guts. Be honest with me here. Uh, hold on now, Shintani's like a mentor to me. So, about that job you have. If you really Eternal want that Darkness job, is up there, Wind Waker is up there for sure. So show your I, a little more I did like Twin Snakes on GameCube as I well. Some Doriaki. Just Ooh, right Metroid there. Prime. Hmm, yeah. Huh? Ooh. <clears throat> Sorry? Wouldn't be Luigi's did Mansion. Eat them all? All but half. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> She's great. Pikmin, yeah, fantastic. On GameCube. Resident Evil 4. That's right, it was a GameCube exclusive, wasn't it? No, I I like Luigi. Don't start any vicious rumors like that. Luigi's Mansion um, 3, or the latest one, I adored. It was up for game of the year. It was amazing. F Zero GX for sure. Rogue Leader's in there for sure. That's one that I reach for when I want to. It's probably in my GameCube right now as Rogue Leader. Okay, what am I doing? Inquire about a job. Now you got me thinking about GameCube games. I think it's probably Resident Evil 4, but it's been muted by so, how many remakes got some we've had of Resident Evil 4. Work, huh? Um, how long his denim tights bother, <laughs> bother me, <laughs> Epsilon Eagle. You know how Paper Mario, fantastic. Wouldn't be many cases for me if Kamurocho was a safe place. Uh -huh. Beautiful like Joe. Collecting. Yeah, man. The These are fantastic hey, games. Holy crap. That than no work at all, am I right? I think Resident Evil Four. Work. You're practically a mercenary. Fine by me. I, I loved I never Super Mario Sunshine. I know it's not everybody's anyway. fave, but I love that game. Listen, Yagami. GameCube is yeah. amazing. You are right, Blade Blur. You ever thought about becoming a lawyer again? I haven't. And why is that? Take a good look at me, Genda Sensei. Hmm. These eyes aren't exactly the best judge of character. I think I made that clear three years ago. What use am I as a lawyer if I can't tell good Take from bad? Yeah. Knock it off, Yagami. Stop beating yourself up. What happened to Emmy was tragic, yes. But it wasn't your fault. Epsilon Eagles voting for Eternal Darkness. That was a pretty phenomenal experience for sure. Something like that again. <sighs> so. Charlie's Angels was the best game. One more. Guys I don't think you believe that you know. one more. 
keeps me distracted from Emmy Chan. Television live. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you've got. Just give me something. Uh, how about a divorce case? I have some evidence that needs collecting. It'll be the usual deal. Stake out a love hotel, snap some photos, tail the guy, dig through some trash. This is, uh, uh, there's a real artistry man, to keeping this interesting. Uh, I give and, up. And I, you know, I normally you wouldn't be talking over later. it, but the, the camera techniques that they're employing, next time, don't bring a very sophisticated, here. very knowledgeable right of cinematic storytelling, uh, mixing things up, you say? constantly changing the camera, but not overdoing it, which I think I've seen a lot of developers do. Like, they, they have the ability to mix and match, uh, and, it, and it just goes too insane, you know? Gendalov. That freeform, go anywhere in the, in the room yes. kind of camera. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ah, Blake Blur. Yagami san. That was Shintani sensei. <laughs> Super Monkey Ball. Apparently, he wants your help gathering evidence. First Metroid murder. Prime was huh? incredible. I think it's between this Metroid Prime, murder Wind Waker, Resident Evil 4. I've heard of it too. I think th those are my like pick for the best GameCube blows game. That divorce I was going to send you on out of the water. It is a side story of the Yakuza games. Case. Shintani Sensei says he's waiting for you at Tender, that bar on Taihei Boulevard. Tender? I'm there all the time. Just making sure. Yeah, they're, it's kind of intimidating, eh, Lando? I mean, you could start with Yakuza 0, which is kind of the, the beginning of the whole story. But there's so many of them. I just jumped out the window. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Uh, there's so many of them. They're all cool, too. I mean, that, that's what's so impressive. And all of these remakes, these these recent remakes, have been handled so deftly. They're all very cool. This again. Like a Dragon's actually not a bad place to start because it's um, kind of a standalone experience with a different character, but it's very different gameplay from the rest of the Yakuza game. So let's see if I can jump into an, a classic arcade game. I haven't played uh, Judgment before. And one thing that's true about all the uh, Yakuza games. What is this? No, can't go in here. No, where can I go play something? Is it here? Oh, uh, probably upstairs. Nope. I'm just running into everything. Uh oh, okay. This is great. Wow. Really, guys? It, it must be crazy to be uh, to have your face mapped and stuck into the game, and then have it be beaten the crap out of by the hero of the game and to see your face all bloody and smeared like that. Um, okay, let's go into the uh, into the map and see if there's an arcade that I can go to. What is this? Paradise VR? Let's go there. So you can play the game in first person if you want, which is crazy. I've always wanted a degenerate mess of a girlfriend. <laughs> Oops, I'm going the wrong way. All right. Oh, he's got a bat for me. Nice. It is kind of like River City Ransom in a way, isn't it? Excellent. All right. Let's go to... Uh, Let's go to the Sega Arcade. If... There it is, Club Sega. Virtual Fighter 5's in this game? Cool. Can I get into... I don't know if everything, anything's open yet. Might not be.
Oh, that's amazing, Sam. I am one one one. What did they say about their experience? Oh, here we go. Okay. What is this? What the hell is this? Sure. Yeah. Is this like House of the Dead? What is this game? Kamuro of the Dead. Oh, wait a second. Are do they switch everything around and and now I'm in I'm in a I'm in the the world of judgment, but it's uh, oh this is so cool. What? Awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Uh, what do I shoot with? What a trip. It's weird that you reload with the trigger button. Great, man. So they they put in a House of the Dead type clone. Uh-oh. Explode. missing okay um i'm gonna quit out of this if i can okay let's see what else, what other mini games are in here this is so cool okay let's go up here oh man look at this space harrier Darts, okay, let's play a little space area. Why not, right? Oh, and Race League. Motor Raid, I don't know if I've ever played this before. <laughs> All right, work and wait. <laughs> Sega rules. Frickin' love Sega! Sega! I've never played this. This looks awesome. Robin. I'll be Robin. Let's go. Oh, right on, Billy Williams. Thank you. Yeah, it's an amazing world, man. We can reach people in all kinds of cool ways now. It's so cool. If you had told me in my 20s when I was conceiving of this whole concept that one day I'd be streaming games in real time with an audience, uh, I would not have believed it. This is so slick, man. Look at this game. I don't even, I didn't even know this game existed. You're on like Akira motorcycles. It's like a Kira road rash in the future. That's dope. Was this on the Dreamcast? Look 
go. I'm third place, second. All right, I made 50, 50 bucks back. This is so great. Game was only in arcade, Sam. I am 111. What a trip. I mean, you get the full game wrapped up in judgment. Like, two or three of these types of experiences makes judgment worth the cost, you know? Not to mention judgment is super cool as well. Sega rules. Nintendo should do stuff like that where they I mean they they have the you have the ability to collect classic games in Animal Crossing, but um I don't like the I th I think in the GameCube Animal Crossing you could play some of those games, right? But in uh, more recent Animal Crossings you cannot. But the idea of playing as characters, navigating through a world where the game content exists and you have the ability to play it, that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful idea, a, a wonderful way to celebrate your history. Akira meets Road Rash. So dope, right? Subnautica. I did check that out. Um, I haven't checked that out in VR. I heard it's fantastic in VR. I just downloaded it to the PlayStation 5, as a matter of fact. That's so great. I dig that. Okay, um, let's let's quit and uh, I'll finish the mission. It's so Sega Saturn, right? Um, is there another? I, I, I'm gonna hop out. Of, we've all played a lot of Space Harrier, so there's this House of the Dead type clone. There are another. I love how fast he is. Okay. Uh, is there another arcade that we can go to? What is this one? Yoshi, Yoshi, Yoshida batting. Oh, okay, so like a batting game. Darts. Where am I? I'm way up there. Let's go to this club Sega. Let's see what's down here. Get into a couple fights on the way. Sorry, buddy. Not a wise choice. the bat. Okay, where's the, uh, I'm on the car. This guy moves with purpose. 
There it is. Okay. Ah, we got Fighting Vipers, Fantasy Zone, Virtual Fighter 2, and Virtual Fighter 5. Crazy. Let's check out Fighting Vipers for a second. Cody J, good to see you. So you have this for the PS4. It's on the PS5 as well. So your PS4 game will... will uh, I don't know if they auto-upgrade it to remastering. Whoa, what? It, what is this game? That's a fully functioning arcade. This is the way that uh, X, XGR... This is the way that Sega rules with their Yakuza series. This is um, uh, a side story called Judgment. But yeah, you can run into arcades and, and start playing with uh, classic games that have all been uh, emulated and upconverted, which is surreal. Okay, let's go. I have this for the Saturn, I think, yeah? Tokyo. Let's be Tokyo. Round one. Let the action begin. Go! So, Virtual Fighter. My robot, or are they just armored arms? I'm sure a second player can jump in Veg Zone. I think the full game is there. Yeah, there's versus mini games, and you can uh, from the front menu. I think once you've unlocked them, you can play all of these games. So it's like Sega history, too. I mean, it's just so cool. What an amazing franchise. And there's a lot of crossover, like lots of games that you uh, you see in... Um, uh, like lots of the same games that you see in various Yakuza titles. But there are new ones that are sprinkled all the way through. Um, sure we'll play a little Fantasy Zone. You miss butt rock in fighting games. Jet Set Radio would be amazing one more. All right, let's go. Oh, this is... What is it? How do I... Oh, I have credit here. It is the arcade game, okay. So cool. Some good music in this game. Oh! Oh! Those giant noses almost got me. Oh, come on. Okay, all right. I'm not, I'm not good, but that is cool that that's in there. Playing this on the Xbox Series X. Act note, sis. Great callback, man. Good suggestion. So VF5 is in there. That's so cool. That's a great game. Uh, let's see if there's another arcade. What's this one? Modern Mejong. Darts. So all of these 
little uh, controller icons are different places to play. And there's probably another area that you go to as well. Oh, and you can drone race. That's cool. Okay, but let's go finish the mission, um, which is right there. So I'll turn around. Here we go. Go into the bar. This is a really nice way to wrap up the week, guys. Thank you for joining me. Um, okay, so we're going... Uh, the maps in these games always confuse the hell out of me. I, I, I'm always turned around. It takes me like two hours before I start to figure out where the hell I'm going. Okay, so I'm back this way. Okay. There we go. I think it's because the maps don't rotate, or you can adjust that in the... Uh, in the options. Okay. And then this way, yes? Okay, there we go. And then tender is... Is this it? Yeah. It's so cool. It's called tender. Got my first job here 20 it's years It's relaxing. Back. Thanks, Vic. <laughs> Masada son never changes. Billy I Williams, thank you so much. That's time. right, Jordan Cunningham. Black about. Ops Cold War did have all the retro stuff. That was great. That was great. a nice addition there too. We've got some business to talk. <laughs> surprised to see me? I'd be more surprised if I didn't. Who's that talk? A detective buddy? Not exactly, Mari. This one's a client. Thank you, Cody J. I almost uh, booted up Cyberpunk. I think next week we're, we're going to jump long, back in and check out uh, the most recent You're update late. on Cyberpunk again. Come on. You called me here totally out of the blue. Chill out, maybe. Huh? And I'm getting a drink. And I'm paying? Let's call it a business expense. Here's a familiar face. Kyohei Hamura. From the Matsugane family. I ran into him earlier, actually. Take it he's your client? Yep. Got hauled in earlier. They're charging him with murder. Seriously? Seriously. So, the Matsugane patriarch came to us for his defense. Genda Sensei is the go to guy for all his legal problems, you know? How'd you end up in the driver's seat then? Genda Sensei gave him my card. Gotta say, not looking forward to defending a Yakuza. Tough luck, I guess. Anyway, you're coming with me to the station. Need to have a word with Hamura. You got way more Yakuza experience than me, after all. Yeah, I suppose I do. Let me give you a rundown of the case first. Love these voices. The victim was a Yakuza. A Kansai guy. Part of the Kyori clan. They found his body tossed in a dumpster just about a week ago. Hold on. This is... The guy who got his eyes gouged out? Yep. Cops think Hammer is the one who did it. Hell of a case, man. This is the third Yakuza they've found like this. Fortunately, we're not dealing with a triple homicide here. So the media isn't swarming. Hmm? hammer has got an alibi for the first two incidents. This third murder is the only one they're pinning on him. So they won't admit the cases are connected? No. Makes sense. Three bodies and not a single suspect isn't exactly given the cops credibility. Guess they just want to get this case closed and move on. Even if they have to force it through. And hey, the victim was Yakuza. Nobody really cares who hangs for it. All right. Clever thinking is rewarded. As conversations progress, you may come across a point where you'll have to select the best response. Okay. All right. So, um, why'd they come after Hamura of all people? Two reasons. First, the victim was a Kansai yakuza from a group that's been making inroads in Kamurocho and picking fights with the Tojo clan along the way. 
Odds are, this was a Tojo guy wanting to send a message. And as you know, Hamura fits the bill. And the other reason? Hamura and the victim were seen having a fight on the day of the crime. RK Games, good to see you. Camera footage, then. Ah, Vincent, thank you so much. You're very kind. I think you should maybe wait some more on Cyberpunk. They probably still have a whole lot to add. Have you revisit, revisited No Man's Sky recently? They've kept adding lots of new stuff. Good idea there, Miss Ojat. Um, you think Hamra really killed him? I'm just choked curious. poorly. I don't know. And I don't really care. If he says he's innocent... Yeah, I buy digital. They've been waiting. They've been working job. just on getting the game running properly on on the existing machines. But that it, it's been a long time waiting Has for Amara that. Has said anything to you? Yeah, he told me he didn't do it. Claimed the cops were. Well, I felt like we were in the middle of a cut sequence so for a while. XGR and Cody, and I thought, okay, let's pop into full screen there for a bit. Okay, I've asked all the questions. Let's go. I think I know enough. We should get to the station. You go on ahead. I got some calls to make first. Just take a cab there. Will do. That's like he's he's uh, daring people to try to take his phone away Leaving from him. Already talk, and only one drink in. Just what can try. I say? Just I'm try. It. Is that his phone or his wallet? That. What's going Another on back there? Another customer of mine has a job for you. Oh. Tell you about it when you're not so swamped, okay? Hey, I'm not about to pass up a paying gig. Then come back when you and Shintani Sensei are done. Okay, so I gotta go back to the cop station. Okay. So why do I have five arrows? What's happening there? Oh, they're, they're cabs. Okay, gotcha. So I am going to a different area. All right, let's go. That's a lot of fun. You suckers. Do you know who I am? Okay. Everybody gets out of the way. <laughs> All right, let's take a taxi. Where are we going? I tried to play uh, near replicant today. I buy digital. That's what I I tweeted earlier in the day, um, but uh, I loaded it up on the PC and it just wouldn't run properly. And I uh, updated the drivers. I haven't checked out stuff on the PC in a little while, so um, I just didn't have time to kind of get it working. We just keep running into and then, each uh, other tonight. Any the judgment uh, code showed up, and I went, well, "I'll play this today." Hammerson. Uh, I'm Shintani from the Genda Law Office. I'm Cody J, I'm psyched. I love those actors. I'm glad you said yes, Shintani Sensei. We're gonna get along real good. Sam, I am Just with like the deep cuts boss, and the great Genda suggestions, Sensei. always. Uh, the weirdest thing right. keeps happening to me on Black Ops. Every time I play well, a Fireball Z in Zombies, my PS4 I'll Pro freezes. It never God freezes from anything doing else. Doing the huh. to try and back up your claims. No better guy to do it. Oh man, listen to the it's a raspy it voice a thon right now. So, they brought you in under suspicion of murder. Can you tell me more about that? Huh? What do you want to know? Whether or not you killed the guy. They have their work cut out for him, Akavario, but you know, Your what's interesting is of course mess, Naughty Dog's of involved truth. in the show. No. And uh, find out you actually did it. they've been, I mean, that's what the second game was all about, was kind of better. expanding the world out sure and giving the us the idea of agency with a lot of life. other characters. So I think that There's the show is going to lean Just into like that. Just like you did that serial killer, huh? Uh, Yagami? 
All the evidence at the time pointed to Shinpei Okubo being innocent. That's why I chose to trust him. But then, that Okubo guy, well, he proved us all wrong. I think that is the, uh, the commander from Metal Gear, isn't it? Come on, Tark. Let's be honest about what you were really focused on at the time. You wanted that precious acquittal so bad, you didn't even stop to think. Billy you Williams, you think um, Xbox and Nintendo right. are going to be partnering what on something huge before the end of the year? Try saying that to Emmy Tarasawa's parents. That's why you quit, right? Look at these angles. Face them. I mean, this is cinematography right here. This is really talented <coughs> filmmaking. You think um, we could maybe get back to the case? I love um, 3D sure. character-based action-adventure games. So platforming, puzzle-solving, combat. Um, I think I lean into that heavily. I love Spider-Man and Batman Arkham and Uncharted and Mario and Zelda. I mean, those are my heavy hitters, those types of games. I love those. But I also love first-person shooters. I love American role-playing games. I like Japanese role-playing games. Um, I'm not huge on games as a service. I feel like I, I'm, you know, I've been doing this for so long. I've got some real... Uh, uh, his time I don't know, an expectation to complete something and then move on to something fan. else. Around and I feel like games as a service is artificially just trying to keep you looped into the ecosystem. There's some fun in garbage. those games for sure. I love I you the Division 2 and Destiny is pretty damn sweet. Um, yep. Some good stuff in Avengers. Some Did the okay stuff in Outriders. To you being the killer? Do they have anything substantial? Nope. Bastards are keeping their lips sealed. Ain't that right, Shintani Sensei? Yes. At this point in the Paul Eiding, right? Serpent Six. Got against you. Your words are the only thing we'll have. Right, Louis Arias. I mean, this is great work. <laughs> is well, we did is. the uh, the making of Metal Gear Four, and we were with um, Kojima's team, working on uh, you know all, covering all aspects of it. But I was really blown away by the. The craftsmanship of the uh, in-game cinematics group, and there was a lone guy that was kind of the director of, uh, you know, camera placement and tracking and all that. And we got a great interview with the person. I forget the guy's name, uh, but I was just in, like completely blown away. Like clearly, this person could be operating the physical version of what he was doing in virtual space, and. Uh, it was eye-opening for me, and I, I think I embarrassed the guy a little bit because I was so effusive about his work. But, I mean, the Metal Gear stuff, say what you will about some of those lengthy cut sequences or whatever, but there is just some beautiful fidelity in the way they visually tell the stories. And uh, for that particular game, but I suspect for many previous games, it was this person, and he did an amazing job. Because how many games have we played, especially old classic stuff, where the camera just does a 360 around the two characters, and maybe a tight, it goes, there's a you know a tight version of that, and then there's a wide shot, and it's just the camera's just pivoting around, or it's just a, a slow track or something. But the way that they frame those Metal Gear games and and the, uh, these Yakuza games, and there's excellent work out there. There's lots of examples, but it stands out when it's done. Um, with such cinematic clarity, you know. Okay, um, I missed all of what they were talking about, so uh, arguing. Where did you and Kume have your fight? Out in front of a club, Amor, over on Supon Street. Me and a few Matsugani boys had a little run-in with a Kiori guy. Turns out that was your boy, Kume. And who started the fight? Well, that is silly, Billy Williams. Think? Love the games that you love, man. Kansai punk strut around like he owns the place. I'd already thrown a few drinks back at that point, too. What time did this all go down? And, Just past and nine. And console fanboyism, that's got to go. So what happened? That, that sort of allegiance, that, that clubhouse mentality, nah, the console war mentality. It, it made for great him, dramatic marketing in the 80s and 90s, but now it's just... I, I thought it was just a little scuffle. PlayStation just published a game on the Xbox. You're saying you abducted Kume it's on a it's over. Public street? Yep, a 
Amor is one of the family businesses. So I went in, kicked the customers out, and kicked the There you go, Akavario. Good, good callback. But I'm telling you, I didn't kill the guy. Just tossed him out the back door when I was done with him. I left right after, too. A few minutes before midnight. Uh-huh. So you were seen dragging Kume into the club, and he was found in the morning with his eyes gouged out. <laughs> I'd arrest you too if I was a cop. <laughs> Louis Arias throwing down a gauntlet. Um... Who's the detective in charge of the case? Kuroiwa from Organized Crime. Shintani Sensei is probably real familiar with him. I am. More so because he's one of those brutes with a badge. Pretty sure the Kyori murders are his case. I can't stand him. Guy doesn't give a rat's ass about Yakuza. Um. What do we have on the victim? Toshiro Kume, 34. Run of the mill Kyori grunt. How's it going, Torto Chris? Good to see Kume you. alone when you ran into him? Hard to believe he'd take that kind of risk in hostile territory. It was him and one more. Probably another Kyori asshole. That was Don't cooked up name, for a target so market that them. was going to lap How it up, Emilio. I'd but we've all grown up with these things. These games are not like foreign mystery objects. You don't have to pick, pick an allegiance <laughs> before the software is out there, you know? Man. And you can have more than one machine if you want. And, and uh, you know, apart from a, a small sampling of exclusives on any one of the platforms... Almost every great game is available on every system. Hell, you can play terrific, you know, f fantastic experiences on iOS at this point that are not, you know, free-to-play microtransaction heavy. You have an alibi? It's what an amazing time. time. Died? And it's just getting cooler. Apparently, between 2 and 3 in the morning, the cops were drilling me really oh, Torto hard Chris. Where I was around <laughs> I'm going to rent Mortal Kombat tonight to watch on Prime Video. I'm so excited. I hope you dig it. I had fun. It's crazy. There is some good humor. Somebody made a comment on my review that I didn't call out the um, uh, the guy that played Kano, and he does he does a great job. Pretty much. Someone should have seen something, though. That's all I wanted to ask. I think I've heard enough for now. We'll Ooh, it's going. six. Um... Okay, so that was a taste. This is a big game. It's a big, deep game. Uh, Judgment is super cool, just like all of the uh, Yakuza games. I'm going to play some more of this. I might stream a little more of this, actually. I might get a little bit deeper and then play some more. Uh, but I'm definitely intrigued. Um, it's super fun to play the, uh, the classic arcade stuff as well. Um, I'll be back on Monday with a brand new rundown for you, and uh, I've got some uh, new content headed your way very soon, um, so watch for that. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for uh, letting people know that EP is making lots of new content out there. Appreciate you so much. We'll see you soon, and until then, play forever.